There is a character in Wano that has been missing for the past couple of chapters now. And no, I'm not talking about Denjido. I am talking about Keribu. And today's discussion and Reddit thread is going to be focused around him and his potential impacts in the story moving forward in Wano. But real quick, I just have to give a huge thank you to you guys because I never thought you guys would enjoy these Reddit discussions so much. And granted, they're not like my most popular videos, but just the fact that we can all come together and look at other people's theories and just dissect it, talk about it, and we don't even have to agree with them half the time, but it is fun and nice to see what other people in the community are thinking about and just talking about in general. And I'm glad you guys are joining me for that. And here's the thing, I really want to make my own One Piece theories one day because I have a couple on the back burner. But the thing is, I just don't have the time. I work a full-time job and it really sucks because I want to be able to create more and better content for you guys. But this is all I can offer right now at the time being and just how big the channel size is. But eventually one day, I promise you guys, I will give you some amazing content. But other than that, I'm just really happy you guys are joining me for these small conversations. And it is a lot of fun to see what people in the community can come up with. So without further ado, let's hop right into today's theory. It is about Caribou. Spoilers, do not sleep on this man. Caribou learned the truth about Shidohoshi being the ancient weapon of Poseidon in chapter 650. Yes, I, I remember when this happened in the anime and I was like, bro, this guy just learned some life changing information and he has yet to do anything with this information. And now he's in Wano. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, how did he get here? I thought he was a throwaway character. And not just that, but he has managed to slip into the background seamlessly without anybody noticing him because he's so weak. And here's the thing. These are some major islands he's participating in. He went to Fishman Island here to learn about Poseidon. Now he is in Wano, where he might even get a rubbing of the road pony glyph that Kaido has. Because let's be real, where is this man? So Caribou has so much evil hidden potential, it is unreal. The real question is, how is he gonna use it? So with that being said, let's get further into the theory. And to be fair, I just wanna let you guys know, I have no idea what this theory is about. I kinda scrolled down a little bit, I was like, this looks pretty good. And to be fair, I have not thought about Caribou for a hot minute. So I was sleeping on this man. I was sleeping on Caribou. Okay, so he shows us a panel here where he learns about the ancient weapon Poseidon. So he knows what's happening. He knows that it is related to the mermaid princess. This news could sell for a lot of money to the world government, to big news Morgans. Imagine if he sells this to Morgans, you open up the newspaper one day and you're like, oh, let's see the headlines here. Oh, we have some Marines going over there. Oh yeah, ancient weapon found in Fishman Island that could destroy the world. Cool, regular Sunday. That would be insane. That would be the biggest scoop out there. So let's continue his theory here. This chapter released on January 16th, 2020. Yo, we're so old. Holy crap, that's so long ago. So it's extremely easy for the average reader to forget that this even happened. In addition, Caribou mentioned that he wanted to tell someone about this information. Basically, he wants to join up with someone major in exchange for this valuable information. And then he links a panel here. Did this actually happen? Damn it all. I wake up and what do I find? All the treasure gone without a trace. Who the hell took it? I'll rip them to pieces, you better believe it. I gotta take that mountain of treasure and the mermaid princess's secret out of here with me. If I do, that person will take a shine to me for sure. I didn't even know this happened to be honest. I mean, I am one of those average readers who read this in 2012 and completely forgot about it. The million dollar question is, who does Caribou intend to give this valuable information to? I think the answer is obvious. Blackbeard is the person, but I'll provide information to support my argument. You know what? I'm gonna say right here, we don't need the evidence. I actually believe that. Caribou is a really scummy guy. He looks like he would work with some shady pirates, some really evil dudes. And let's be real here. We met Kaido, he doesn't work for Kaido. We met Big Mom, he doesn't work for Big Mom. Shanks? No way this guy is in Shanks' crew. The only big person in the new world that this man could logically work for is Blackbeard. So I, I must just say it right here, based on his appearance, I'm yes, I'm judging him by his looks, but based on his appearance and his character, I think Blackbeard fits with this guy. And you have to remember, Blackbeard has a really big crew. Yes, he has his 10 Titanic captains to rival Luffy's Straw Hat crew, 
but he also has a lot of random underlings who are devil fruit hunters so it would make sense that they would recruit some you know some scum pirate like caribou in the first place initially the phantom thought the answer was kaido because drake was the one who found him at the time it was an obvious choice but even then i thought that it was too obvious especially for oda yeah we have drake here pulling in caribou and to be honest they kind of look like comrades i don't know what it is caribou just looks ridiculous 90 percent of the time so i was like oh drake just wanted to go pick up a nakama not the case when we got to wano caribou was in prison he was in udon with kid so he is obviously not a part of the kaido pirates or beastmen pirates sure enough i was right caribou never ended up telling the beast pirates about the ancient weapons kaido is not the person big mom has been defeated and so we're safe to take her out of our equation as well. Caribou does not want to just tell anyone, but someone with renowned reputation. Because of this, he doesn't even consider someone powerful like Kid to be an option. This person needs to be strong and have a good reputation amongst pirates. And then he shows another reference here, where Caribou says, nah, trust me, his reputation's in tatters now. He tried to mess with Big Mom and got his arm ripped. Oh no, no, not the Kid slander, no! and had to flee in disgrace from what the rumors say rumors why are you wasting time on that crap which i'm assuming is luffy right yeah caribou refusing to join up with kid and he prefers luffy yeah if not kaido or big mom why would oda bring caribou to wano because oda intends to have this mystery person come to wano the seeds have already been planted when big mom and kaido all of a sudden revealed that they would be targeting the ancient weapons before this chapter has either of them ever mentioned an ancient weapon before? No, the answer is no. This caught me by a lot of surprise that they knew what was happening and that they were actually after the ancient weapons. I thought it was insane, man. And then we have another reference here. Uh, it is a sign of confidence that the Navy headquarters has a new force capable of stopping us because they dissembled the Shishibukai system. And then he says, but while the world government grows arrogant, we have decided to join hands with big mom pirates to seize the greatest powers in this world the ancient weapons so it shows that if you want to rule the world if you want to rule the seas and maybe even use it as a stepping stone to become king of the pirates like kaido and big mom were intending to then it makes sense that blackbeard would also be after the ancient weapons which i think is a pretty good point here Oda has now thrown the idea of the ancient weapons into the main plot of One Piece, finally. So now is the best time to finally have Caribou's information revealed to Blackbeard. Blackbeard will be the final pirate in the way of reaching Laftail and becoming the Pirate King. Blackbeard has been progressing much like Luffy has throughout the entire series, and with both Kaido and Big Mom out of the equation, he is now the most obvious choice. And I guess here he has points about why Blackbeard will come to Wano. Before I read these though, I have to say, I have always been a huge fan of Blackbeard coming to Wano. And the reason why is because Blackbeard has the strongest Logia. He has the strongest Paramecia. Does this man not deserve, he probably doesn't, but does he not deserve to have the world's strongest Zoan, which is most likely Kaido's Devil Fruit? He took down one Yonko, he might as well go after another. And if you wanted to bring Shanks into the equation, he even gave Shanks a scar. This man has a notorious reputation for messing with the Yonko. And if Luffy does defeat Kaido, imagine how disrespectful it would be if Blackbeard were to show up to give Kaido his death that he's been looking for all this time. Luffy beats him, and then Blackbeard's like, hey, I heard you always uh, wanted to die. You're always very suicidal. Well, I got you, buddy. Pulls out the knife and just takes out the devil fruit. That would be a horrible but amazing plot twist. And now back to the theory. Blackbeard is coming to Wano. His points include, he was introduced alongside crewmates that can turn invisible and shapeshift the ultimate infiltration team. Yes, he's talking about Shiryu of the Rain and he's talking about Katarina Devon, which I mean, I guess Caribou kind of fits into that. I, I guess he's just a scummy person. Like I said, the reason Caribou disappears into the background is because he literally turns into a puddle of mud and just crawls around and he's also very weak so a lot of characters pay him no mind whatsoever and then he says oda casually drops that there's a back door entrance to wano why would he drop that information just for apu and the numbers to arrive someone else will be using that entrance yes so here's a big thing right when big mom got defeated 
and she got knocked down into the ground law shot her with that giant beam i thought that big mom would fall into that hole because that hole is around that area of wano and i was like, oh my god big mom is gonna hit the ocean it like lights out for big mom that did not happen and we have yet to see anybody use that secret entrance i was guessing that maybe the big mom pirates would use it to come back up to wano but it's like their third attempt climbing up that waterfall so they're not using that secret entrance who is going to use it why introduce something that important if no one is going to touch it so i do think someone will use it eventually or maybe even that's where we drop onigashima and it becomes a second entrance to wano without having to go up the waterfall that's another one of my explanations for that secret entrance but yeah let, let, let's go with somebody uses it let's say blackbeard uses this entrance also how would he find out about it did apu know or not apu did caribou know about this as well all right so moving on moria has been there before maybe he needs someone to direct him but even if not moria's character has connections to wano so the thing with Moria and Wano, though, is there's not a good chance that he even knows about the secret entrance. And not to mention, the last thing we saw of Moria was that he was about to get slaughtered by the Blackbeard pirates. So I really don't think he would join Blackbeard in helping him come to Wano. I, I, I can't see that happening, especially after what Blackbeard did to Abba Salam. Uh, coming in when the battle is over and literally through the back door is the most Blackbeard thing I could think of. He needs to do something major to get another bounty increase, and his current bounty will not be the last. Yes, I agree with this one. If Luffy is going to get an insane bounty by the end of Wano, I feel like Blackbeard needs to get a pretty decent boost as well to just stay up there with him, to, to prove that he is the antagonist of the story and probably Luffy's main villain. How is he going to get to Laugh Tail without the road Poneglyphs? You can't reach the final island without all four. Oddly enough, we still haven't found or heard anything about the road Ponyglyph in Wano. So we do know it is in Wano. Um, I think Brooke or Robin mentioned it at some point, but they just have no time to get it right now. But the thing with this is I agree with this. How is Blackbeard going to rival Luffy on his journey to become Pirate King? Blackbeard, from what we know of, has zero Ponyglyphs. So during this whole adventure, I'm like, whoa, Zunisha is now in Wano. Kaido has a Ponyglyph. Would it not make sense that Blackbeard comes to Wano, takes Zoe's Ponyglyph, and then takes Kaido's Ponyglyph rubbings as well? And then who knows, maybe he even heads to Big Mom's territory while she's not home and snatch up the third road Ponyglyph. Blackbeard would be a menace. This is the best time for someone with malicious intent to make a move. All right, and now lastly, his last point here says... Caribou wants to tell Blackbeard about the ancient weapons. This will probably spark the conflict between the Straw Hats and the Blackbeard pirates. I don't think the ancient weapons will necessarily start the conflict. I feel like they already have that conflict going for them already. But um, yes, I think the ancient weapons and having Blackbeard and his crew have them would be a nightmare for Luffy and pretty much everybody in the world. But I do not think Blackbeard's intentions on getting them will cause them to fight off right away. I feel like there will be something else, maybe Luffy still blaming him for Ace, or maybe even Blackbeard shows up in the next arc and who knows, maybe destroys the village and then Luffy gets really, really upset. There's a lot of things that could happen, but I cannot see Luffy saying, oh, ancient weapons, we gotta stop him. Luffy has not shown any interest in the ancient weapons whatsoever, so I can't see that. So now, let's see what some of the comments have to say about this. You would most likely sleep inside Caribou, especially as a mermaid bro. This man, I remember 2012, bro. I was I was like in high school still, I think. And I remember watching One Piece on the TV at one point, and my dad walked in while Caribou was stuffing like mermaids inside of himself. And I had to explain. I was like, Dad, please, no. This this isn't the hentai you've been hearing about. This is uh One Piece. This is the cool uh, the cool show with Luffy and stuff. He did not believe me whatsoever. Thank you, Caribou, for that memory. I thought Caribou has become the Pirate King's refrigerator because he could store things. Dude, this guy has a Logia. Remember back in the day? Re remember back in the day of One Piece where somebody had a Logia fruit? You were like, well, we got to stay away from them. We got to stay away from this man. Only a couple people have Logias, man. Ace? Crocodile? The Admirals? Caribou, he's up there, bro. But now that we have hockey, now that we can actually attack Logia users... And we can really show off real, like, I wouldn't say martial arts, but real abilities. 
Caribou's kind of trash. Caribou is kind of freaking trash. What if Caribou is a fanboy of Blackbeard, like how Barto is to Luffy? That wouldn't be bad, um, but I think Caribou is more infatuated by money because he wanted to steal treasure. He wanted to steal mermaids so he could sell them. I don't really think he's a fanboy. I think he just wants money and notoriety. And he, oh, somebody wrote something good here. Let's look at this. Really good theory. I also believe the one Caribou is talking about is Blackbeard. Him showing up in Wano through the back entrance is not out of character since he's the type of character to do anything to win. I also believe Blackbeard is looking for more than an ancient weapon, but also a third devil fruit, a mythical Zoan. He has many options, Kaido's fruit, Marco's fruit, Yamato's fruit, Gyuki Ma- Oh no, please don't kill Yamato. I don't like that one. Oh, get, get rid of this. Get rid of the Yamato part. I do not want Yamato to, to die just yet. Uh, Gyuki Maru's fruit and Orochi's fruit. I believe Orochi's fruit is the best one for him in terms of offense and defense. Marco's fruit is good defensively, but it just looks weird on Blackbeard. Could you imagine Blackbeard as a big fat phoenix? Kaido's fruit makes him an even larger target, and that's counterproductive since he already takes more damage with the Yami Yami no Mi. Plus, I don't want to have a rehash of Luffy vs Kaido. Yamato is most certainly drawing the straw hat, so it makes no sense for Blackbeard to steal her devil fruit. Gyukimaru, I'm not sure, but I don't think his devil fruit is a good fit for Blackbeard. I believe he will steal Orochi's devil fruit. It's underused, and the Hebi Hebi no Mi model Yamato no Orochi is wasted on Orochi. Blackbeard's Jolly Roger has three skulls and eight bones. Perhaps this is foreshadowing that Blackbeard's third devil fruit will be a mythical Zoan with eight heads. The Yamato no Orochi has eight heads, so it fits perfectly. Also, the Yamato no Orochi, here, let's look it up real quick. Freaking Orochi's Devil Fruit is the ugliest thing out there. And the reason why is because all of the heads look just like his. Like, who who designed this man? Like, Oda knew what he was doing. He was like, I'm gonna draw this ugly dude, and it's not gonna look good. But imagine this with Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi. Instead of having Blackbeard heads all over, maybe he has a bunch of skulls that are like, have black flame around him. I think it'd be pretty cool, man. I think it'd be pretty dang cool. I like this idea a lot. Nobody sleeps on Caribou. Every freaking YouTuber in every Discord regularly mentions his importance. Well, damn, there goes this video, man. This is my first time talking about Caribou. I need to catch up. This is a really solid theory. Even if it's not 100% accurate, it's still very interesting to speculate who that person could be. And imagine, that was, look at this, this was freaking Fishman Island when he said that. That was ages ago. You know, not, not looking at the 10 year gap of that chapter, but arc wise, that was a long time ago. No idea if Caribou will say that, but you brought an important point. Moria is with Blackbeard, and there's a secret entrance to Wano that Moria may know. Seems like we're going to see Blackbeard entering the war. For Blackbeard to reach the Pirate King level, he needs to fight some bigger obstacles. Now with Wano Arc, I can see three such obstacles. Kaido, Shanks, and the Admirals. If Onigashima's Supreme Battle fails for any reason, no way, Blackbeard will either come to Wano to surpass Kaido or go to Elbaf before the Straw Hats. So, Blackbeard has no reason to go to Elbaf right now. Unless the fourth Pony Glyph that has been hidden off from the world is on Elbaf, I can't see why he would go there. But at the same time, Elbaf is rumored to have some really strong people there. Maybe there's some ancient history buried in Elbaf as well, so I could see Blackbeard going there for that purpose, but as far as becoming Pirate King, there is no reason to stop at Elbaf, even for the Straw Hats. The only reason the Straw Hats are gonna go to Elbaf is because of the lore and because Usopp wants to go there. And who knows, maybe it is on the way, but yeah, that's besides the point. If I was Blackbeard and Caribou told me this secret, I went to Fishman Island and steal Shirohoshi, not Wano. Yes, I feel like Blackbeard would do this as well. But the thing is, is that you have to remember, Blackbeard and his whole crew is so divided right now. The 10 Titanic captains were all separated. They were all on different islands doing their own adventure. And they had to communicate via Den Den Mushi. So it isn't too far stretched to say, hey, you guys go over here, I'll go over here, boom, we're done. We're spreading our wings, man. This is a highly possible situation. I believe the reason Blackbeard's bounty would skyrocket from what it is, is by stealing the rogue pony glyph and CP0 reporting on the situation. Moria being recruited into the crew is also a high possibility, seeing as Blackbeard's and Straw Hat's have progressed consistently. 
Straw Hat's got a Warlord, Blackbeard now has one too. Like I said before, I can't see Moria joining him unless he was forced to. Because Blackbeard, it's not said, but Blackbeard's crew kind of killed Abbasalam and stole his devil fruit. Moria is mad. The guy was livid when he got there. And he started fighting on the spot. There is no way Moria would be like, hey, you killed my Nakama. Cool. I'll join your crew. No freaking way, man. Moria has respect for his crew. And there's no way he would say, hey, Blackbeard, let me join you. Plus, why is Caribou just standing on Tokage Port all this time? It makes you wonder. Yo, that is right. Last time we saw him was when Momonosuke turned into that giant dragon. And that is it. Maybe he is still there waiting on that port. And who knows, maybe the first news we hear of Blackbeard is from the Heart Pirates saying, Hey, Captain, you won't believe what we just saw in this yellow submarine. All right, we'll look at one more. This looks like a good one right here. I think there's a pretty solid chance that Blackbeard shows up in Wano. I believe he will do a few major things while here. The most obvious one is getting info from the Ponyglyph, but I also believe he will kill Kaido after Luffy beats him and steal his Devil Fruit. Finally, the most major thing I believe he will do in Wano is kill Jinbei. Whoa, that's a stretch. <laughs> All right, kill Jinbei. No, he just joined. The Straw Hat's pushing his joining celebration to after the raid just screams he isn't going to make it past the raid. Major death flag reminds me of the trope where a cop talks about how they're going to retire and then he gets killed every horror movie. Every horror movie, the guy is like, hey, man, I can't wait to go see my family after this, man. I can't wait to go retire. I'm going to go on vacation with my wife. I'm going to get married. And then next thing you know, the guy has a knife in his back. Happens all the time. I watch a lot of horror movies. And let me tell you, this happens. I can't see it happening with Jinbei, though. I, I'm going to say it right here. I don't think Jinbei is going to die, but I, I get what he's trying to say. With that, the only person I could see actually killing a straw hat is Blackbeard. Hey, I said earlier, Luffy would not fight Blackbeard if it was just over the ancient weapons. You know, granted, if he kidnaps Shirahoshi, that's a different story. But if Blackbeard simply says, hey, I want to create Uranus. I want to get all these weapons and, you know, to destroy the world. Luffy would be like, hey, I'm going to stop him. But he wouldn't be too motivated. Blackbeard has already taken down Ace. And Luffy has gone over that. He's grown past that to some extent. But what if Blackbeard revisits that trauma? He's like, I took Ace. And now I'm going to take Jinbei. That would be insane, man. That would be insane. And then this guy kind of disputes it. He says, I highly doubt Oda would ever kill a straw hat. Ace only did because Oda needed a reason for Luffy going into training. If Kaido gets defeated now, I see no other character that would be strong enough to deserve a second time skip. And it's not like Luffy needs an additional reason to fight, the one pirate responsible for Ace's death. That being said, if a straw hat were to die, or actually, or figuratively, it would make more sense for it to be Usopp, since all his lies eventually come to reality and he expressed many times he wants to die a brave warrior of the sea. The day Usopp dies is the day I cry. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna turn on this camera one day, freaking bawling my eyes out. No. I love Usopp, dude. Usopp is hit or miss sometimes because he switches from a coward to a hero, like, very often. So it's like, ah, woo, go Usopp. And then it's like, ooh, ah, I don't want to watch him. But the times he does become a hero, the times he, Usopp does stand up and gives his amazing speeches are some of the best moments in One Piece. But yeah, that's where we're going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for reading it and watching it with me. I really enjoy these theories, man. I love seeing what you guys have to say. So please let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. And with that being said, just thank you so much for watching, liking, and subbing to this video. Tomorrow, we will be hitting a couple of new theories as well. I think I have three or four on the back burner, and then after that, I will be looking for some more new ones. So if you guys have any recommendations or anything you want me to talk about, please just tell me in the comments down below. Just at me, and then that's where it shows up on my notification feed, and I can see it and respond to it specifically. So, catch you guys later. And also, if you guys want some non-PG-13 gameplay, check out my second channel down below. And I have a Discord that has some pretty shoddy stuff. We all just hang out there, talk about One Piece, the spoilers, etc. We just hang out. And if you want to join that, that is also down below as well. And I also stream on Twitch. I play a lot of Elden Ring and we just, like I said, hang out. So <laughs> I use the word like hang out like five times right there. With that being said, cheers guys and have a great rest of your day.